Thursday, January 5th, 2017. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. I am coming to you from a snowy, gray, gem city. But we are thrilled to be joined by the one and only Steve Wolfong, who is in San Antonio. I checked the weather. 50 for the U.S. Army All-American Bowl. Steve, how are you this fine morning? Good morning, Daniel. Look, I can vouch that Bill Kierlich has been down here working his ass off. <laughs> He hasn't absconded away to the Caribbean on uh, the company the, time. The man's got a toothache. And he's just pushing right on through, popping Tylenols and Advils every couple hours, and that's the truth. Tylenol, then Advil, then back to Tylenol. But he's grinding through. Bill's going home today, and uh going to have a root canal on Friday, I believe. Good gracious. But I'm sure he won't miss, you guys won't miss any scoop. No, no, no. He'll have his phone on during the surgery. It'll just be uh, illegible as he writes it out. There's a reason these boys are down there, obviously, in San Antonio. The U.S. Army All-American Bowl has once again become a Buckeye convention as our major football gathering these days when great players are together. We're going to go through some of these guys today. Obviously, there's some hat dances coming up this weekend we want to get to, but let's start with the most well-known guy in the class, the one everyone's looking at, Tate Martell, the quarterback from Bishop Gorman, who has won more high school awards than you can shake a stick at. How has he looked this week among the best of the best? Well, it's an outstanding group. I would take all six of these quarterbacks and be very excited. They all have tremendous talent and all have the ability to be great players on the next level, but through the first two days of practice, I think the most consistent performer has been Tate Martell. We've talked about it a bunch. The Ohio State commit has made high school football look easy for the last three years. He's seen things in slow motion. I wrote earlier this week, I think he's a combination of Doug Flutie and, and Russell Wilson. He's an exciting player uh, when, when things are Going crazy around him. He's got a calmness about him. He sees the field very well. He's a quick decision maker, has the arm talent necessary. And then when you talk to the coaches about him, they love his command of every situation and his leadership in the huddle. Guys like that can um, take you one way in terms of personality. It can be a unifier or kind of a pedestal type. It does seem that as much as Tate is a, braggadocious or out there that his teammates do like him yeah absolutely um you know he's a lightning rod he is the lightning rod in this recruiting class so he certainly has people that like to come after him on social media and on message boards and and whatnot but he certainly backs it up every time he's playing in a real football game he's not a guy that blows you away I was talking to Bill Kierlich about this. He's not a guy that's going to blow you away in a camp setting uh, with tight spirals every rep. Um, But when he's playing in a real football situation, whether it's 7-on-7 or 11-on-11 here in practice down here, or obviously in Bishop Gorman games, he makes a ton of plays. Uh, I don't think he's thrown an interception through two days down here. So he's just a smart, good football player. All right, there's a ton of Buckeyes down there, and we can go through the list. But what I'd like to hear from you is who has jumped out at you? Obviously, at a level that you're at, you will have a bunch of jump-out types. But among you're down there among the elites, and sometimes you get a vibe. Someone has a little swag to them or a little bounce in their step, looks a little different. Who has impressed you among the future Buckeyes that are down there? Well, Chase Young, Chase Young certainly flashes right away. Uh, one of the more uh, he's, he, he's one of the more physically impressive guys down here. I was talking to his high school coach Elijah Brooks earlier this week, and 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 I had said that Chase looks different from seeing him in person at Friday Night Lights in July to now, and and he said that after Chase got back from Friday Night Lights, he really spent the rest of the off season uh, working on getting bigger and. Uh, 
it certainly shows. Uh, Chris Slade, who's uh, a coach in, in Georgia who played in the NFL for a long time out of the oh, yeah. University of Virginia, he's coaching the D-line down here, and I've asked him both days who he's been most impressed with. And uh, each time he started with, with uh, Chase, who um, – flashes the most in, in drills with his athleticism and, and uh, um, fluidness as an athlete. Um, you know, he's 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 had times where he's gotten blocked down here. I mean, he hasn't dominated. He hasn't dominated every session or every every uh, um, drill. Um, but he, you know, his upside is, is right there with anybody's, and, and I haven't seen anything that that's made me think that you know, we have him ranked in the wrong spot, how he still may get a boost. He's a legit 6'5". Yeah, and he's he's long and, and but thick. He's just a unique athlete. He's just a unique athlete. The offensive lineman, Josh Myers and and uh, Wyatt Davis have, you know, like any, any offensive lineman, uh, they're up and down in a week like this when you got a block some of the best defensive linemen in the country on the interior. Now, both are guys that I think will benefit from a redshirt year. Um, not saying they couldn't play right away, uh, but I, I, I think that, you know, they, they certainly they certainly have all the traits coveted. Um, but, it, you know, I, they've been up and down this week. Um, who am I missing? Yeah, not to be uh, a Pollyanna. Sean, Hold on a sec. Not to be a Pollyanna, but – Based on these all-star games and then what I've seen, and this is it's a really hard form to evaluate offensive line, especially in no question. Guys, so, I mean, it's, I want to give yeah, them the I mean, benefit of the we'll, doubt. Right, we'll see. We'll see how they uh, we'll see how they adjust um, when they get to Columbus and, and, and start learning the new offense and and uh, getting their feet wet there. Yeah, you're right in that. But Sean Wade looks pretty. Uh, it looks great in drills, super long. I mean, he, he looks how a five-star defensive back is supposed to look. Um, I don't have my list in front of me. Who else are we we missing here? Aaron Browning. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the, the linebacker's coach on the west is actually Najee Harris, his high school coach. And both days I've talked to him about who he thought were the top linebackers and, and, and Baron Browning and, and, and Levi, uh, who's going to Oklahoma. Those are – Two guys that have, have have kind of separated themselves in their group. Baron Browning athletically is just on another level uh, than the guys on his team. You know, on the other side, you got Willie Gay uh, and, and Tadarian Moultrie and, and Jacob Phillips who have looked fantastic. But but Baron Browning has separated himself on the West team at, at the position uh, at check in on on Sunday. There, you can make a case he was the most physically impressive guy. Uh, and, and then his range and, and, and the things that he can do, play in space. He's a guy that could could come off the edge and rust the rust the passer. Uh, he's a, he's as complete a prospect as you're going to find. How about uh, Haskell Garrett? Not here, not here yet. So he's banged up. Ty John Lindsay not here yet. Uh, so those are guys that I'm not expecting to play in the game. Although Bill the Carroll, JK, is, right? And J.K., same thing. Bill Kierlich had said that uh, Haskell Garrett thinks he may be playing in the game. So uh, I've never seen anyone get here late in the week and, and, and then play in the game, but who knows. Right, let's talk about some of the guys um, who could become Buckeyes, namely the defensive backs, the two hat dancers that we are going to be really focused on. Jeffrey Okuda and Darnay Holmes. What do they look like as players? And then your vibe heading into the dance of hat. Well, both have lived up to their billing as the nation's number one and number two cornerbacks down here. Uh, you know, for Okuda, I mean, I've talked at length with, with you guys. I, I think he's got, I think he's a top 10 caliber prospect regardless of position. Um, he's, he's doing all the little things here uh, as a cornerback. Uh, that, that's made him be, be a difference maker in practice a couple times. Ha, had an interception to, to end practice Tuesday. Um, and, and Darnay's super fluid, super fast, super quick. You know, he's a guy that will be able to be a difference maker against those quick, shifty guys in the slot. 
but uh, Darnay weighed in at close to 200 pounds. So he's, you know, although maybe he doesn't have that height coveted, you know, he's he's a powerful young man that that can certainly play on the outside as well. Um, I have Okuda at Ohio State, had him there for a long time. You know, we've talked at nauseum about that. Sure. I think things I think things started trending for Ohio State for Darnay Holmes when he took his official visit for the, for the Michigan game. My crystal ball for him is Buckeyes as well. Um, but anything can happen with Darnay Holmes. Um, you know, I think everyone in the whole free world thought Xavier McKinney was going to go to Clemson at the Under Armour game, and he picked Alabama. So we'll see what happens when, when Darnay announces Saturday. But the Buckeyes should be getting at least some good news with, with Okuda. I'm still expecting two commits, though. One guy who's not going to do his hat dance at this game, but still on the Buckeye radar is Jay Tufeli. Have you had a chance to check him out? Yeah, absolutely. He's one of the more explosive, quick interior defensive linemen, powerful. Um, you know, 24-7 sports, we rank him as the number two defensive tackle in the country. Uh, and, and he's certainly, um, certainly performed outstanding out here. So with Tufeli, you know, at check-in, talking with Bill Kierlich and, and Steve Lorenz and a couple of the guys that interviewed him, you know, the buzz was that Ohio State and Utah was at the top. And then I talked with some Ohio State commits and, and, and kind of talked with Jay. You know, it's going to come down to he's obviously very comfortable uh, with Utah and his family's very comfortable with Utah. Uh, I think uh, it was Chase that talked about how comfortable Jay would be being a U because there's so many people of the same faith around and there's not that many in the Ohio State locker room. I think maybe only Haskell Garrett was was what one of the kids mentioned out here. But on the flip side of that, you know, I think Jay really wants to win a national championship and one school has done that recently and the other school, I don't know if they've ever done it. So um, the last time they went undefeated, the coach at Ohio, their coach is the coach at Ohio State. So We'll, we'll see what we'll see what it really comes down to for Jay. Uh, it's obvious that his interest in Ohio State is very legitimate, but it's not a slam dunk. There's so many factors going into that decision, and, and uh, less than a month ago till signing day, there'll be some more coach in homes, and, and Coach Meyer will get his say. He's going to take a couple more trips. USC is certainly a hot school right now, and they're a finalist for him. And, I would I wouldn't count the Trojans out for anybody that they're pushing for right now with the juice that their program has. All right, we're gonna try and wrap things up here. At least get close to it. Of all the guys you've seen down there that are Buckeyes, or and I guess you could throw Okuda at Holmes into that if you feel the need. Who do you think stands the best chance to get a ratings bump coming out of this weekend or this week? Well, I think Okuda's got a chance to get his fifth star. Um, you know, we haven't really talked about that yet, but I, I would think so. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do with Chase. We already have him as a five star. You know, I don't think that will. Uh, Baron Browning is already sky high in our rankings, so I'm not sure that there's an Ohio. Maybe Sean Wade. Uh, I don't know. I mean. Um, those are guys that are already high, so I can't say anyone's going to get a bump, you know. Um, there's the, there's no Buckeye, Buckeyes I can say is going to get a bump, um, other than maybe Okuda, who's obviously not committed yet, but he's a guy that I've been passionate about uh, for a long time. There you have it, people. The game is Saturday, January 7th, 2017 at the Alamo Dome, 12 Central, 1 Eastern. And don't forget, you will get hat dances from Jeffrey Okuda and Darnay Holmes. We appreciate Steve stopping by. Steve, go back and enjoy another hour of sleep on the time change. Appreciate you guys. Take care. Happy New Year.